The enzyme and the substrate will interact and they will bind to form an enzyme substrate complex. They will bind and then unbind, bind and then unbind, creating an equilibrium between the bound and the unbound state. Sometimes when the enzyme and the substrate are bound, a reaction will happen that produces our desired product. We can label the rate constants of each of these steps of K1 for the forward step of the enzyme substrate binding, K-1 for the reverse of that equilibrium, and K cat as the rate constant for the step of the enzyme substrate complex going to the product. Overall, the rate of this enzyme-catalyzed reaction is equal to the production of products over time, so dp by dt, and that is equal to the rate of this step in which the products are produced. So that's equal to k cat times the concentration of the enzyme-substrate complex. Now the enzyme-substrate complex is an intermediate in this reaction, so it's not able to appear in our overall rate law. So we need to find another term to replace the enzyme substrate complex concentration with. Let's use the steady state approximation to do that. In the steady state approximation, we assume that the change in the concentration of enzyme substrate complex is constant over time. That is, if we add up all of the steps in which the enzyme substrate complex is produced, and if we subtract the rate of all the steps where it's consumed, that will be equal to zero. So the enzyme substrate complex is produced in the first reaction. So that has a rate of K1 times the concentration of enzyme times the concentration of substrate. It is consumed in the reverse of the first step. So we will subtract the rate of that step, which is K minus one times the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex. Next, it is also consumed in the final step that produces product, so I'll also subtract the rate of the second step. So k cat times the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex is the rate of that step. Now, as an aside, overall, we know that however much catalyst we start with, which we'll call our concentration of enzyme naught, so E naught is the starting concentration of catalyst, we know that that has to be equal to however much enzyme we have at a given point in time, plus however much enzyme substrate complex we have. Since enzyme is not gonna be created or destroyed throughout the reaction, the amount that we have just alone is enzyme plus the amount that we have as the enzyme substrate complex must be equal to the original amount of enzyme that we added. So I'm just gonna solve this out for our concentration of enzyme E at any given time. So that's equal to the concentration of initial enzyme added minus the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex. The reason I'm doing this at this point is because I want to make our equation in the end, our rate law, look like biochemists usually look at it. So I'm going to take this and replace the concentration of E in our steady state approximation with this new term, and I'm doing this so that our rate law will look as biochemists look at it in the end. Now I'm going to solve out for the concentration of enzyme substrate complex. Now that we have a new term for our concentration of enzyme substrate complex, we can take that and plug it in to our rate law. Now I'm going to divide the top and bottom of this fraction by K1. When talking about the Michaelis-Menten equation, biochemists group some of these constants together in something called the Michaelis-Menten constant. That is equal to K minus one plus K cat divided by K one. So I'm just going to replace this group of constants here with Km. Another replacement that biochemists make is defining the maximum rate. They call this V max and it's equal to k cat times the concentration of E naught. What this represents is the maximum rate at which the product could be produced if 
every single enzyme was bound with substrate and producing product. So the concentration of E0, that's as if all of the enzyme is being used and KCAT is the step, is the rate constant for the step that produces the product. So that represents the maximum rate. So I'm going to take this KCAT E0 and replace it with Vmax. And finally, I am going to divide the top and bottom of the fraction by the concentration of substrate. This is the Michaelis-Menten equation in its final form, how it is usually seen. You can see though that what we've really done is just using the steady state approximation as we're used to, and then we've just used these two new definitions here and done some algebra to make it look in the form that we normally see it in. If the concentration of substrate is very high, then the concentration of S down here is a large number, and so Km over this large number will be essentially zero, so this rate will look essentially just like Vmax. That is, if we have a very large concentration of substrate, all of our enzyme will be occupied with substrate, and so we will approach the maximum rate, Vmax.